Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk Physical Media. My name is John, and this is the weekly show where we talk all things movies and all things in the world of physical media. And before we get into the Q&A portion of this week's show, we always like to start the week off with the news, and this week is no different. And we got a bunch of great 4K Blu-ray announcements, none of them from any of the boutique labels, but we got some confirmation about some things that were rumored to be coming to 4K Blu-ray, including Zodiac, one of David Fincher's greatest films it might even be his best film and i haven't actually watched zodiac in years it probably like two or three years but it is still one of my favorite david fincher movies it's really what led to mine hunter on netflix which only got two seasons a lot of us have been clamoring for a third season but it never came and it probably never will because it costs too much to make but you can see the bones of that show in zodiac starring jake gyllenhaal robert downey jr Mark Ruffalo. It is a classic, well-made movie that I'm sure will look beautiful on 4K Blu-ray. You can already buy it on 4K on streaming services, but we want to see the uncompressed version on 4K, and that's going to be coming from Paramount on October 29th. And that's actually not the only thing they're going to be releasing on October 29th. They're also going to be giving us Adam Family Values, which, you know, is the sequel to The Adams Family movie that came out in the early 1990s, directed by Barry Seinfeld. The sequel, Adam's Family Values, is just as beloved, but for some reason doesn't get the same exact recognition as the original. I actually think the Adam's Family Values might even be slightly better. I didn't actually grab the original one when it came out because I figured Adam's Family Values would be right on its heels, but it really wasn't. It actually took a very long time for this to finally be coming to 4K Blu-ray. Thankfully, it is, and that's going to be coming on October 29th as well. And spooky season in October is finally shaping up to be a pretty damn good month with the Scream and Shout Factory announcements coming. You know, we're also going to be getting Potty Double, Trick or Treat from Arrow Video. So we're going to be getting a lot this spooky season, and adding Zodiac to the mix is a great one. Adding Adam's Family Values to the mix is also a great one, so I'm really excited about that. Also, we kind of heard this rumor earlier in the year, but 88 Films is going to be releasing American Pie for its 25th anniversary on 4K Blu-ray. I have no idea how 88 Films got the rights to American Pie, but hey, I'm glad, and I think they're going to do a great job with the transfer for this one. American Pie is one of the most beloved 1990s coming-of-age films, especially one of those great raunchy high school comedies. You know, Animal House of the 1970s for the 1990s. It was American Pie. It also spawned three sequels, a couple of direct-to-video movies that I don't really like. The only real carryover from those movies is Eugene Levy, who is great throughout the entire franchise. And maybe this will open the door to the other three movies, because I really do enjoy American Pie 2, American Wedding, and American Reunion. Now, they all pale in comparison to the original one from 1999, which always brings back those nostalgic memories. And the packaging looks pretty good for this, so I'm very glad that we're going to be getting American Pie on 4K Blu-ray. And that one's actually coming pretty soon on September 9th. I didn't expect that, but I guess it was already in the works and it just took them a little while to finally announce it. And one that I'm really excited that's supposedly in the works, and that is Network. Network is one of the best films of the 1970s. It features an all-star cast, including Faye Dunaway. Peter Finch actually won an Academy Award for this movie. He won it actually after he had already died, so very similar to Heath Ledger. You know, he... Did a great job in the film, earned his Academy Award. Ned Beatty has a small but very, very memorable moment in this movie. Great scene, actually, in my opinion, the best scene in the movie because it still rings very true today in the boardroom scene. And honestly, this movie itself rings very true today in 2024. Almost 50 years later, it still has stood the test of time. And this is one of the best Sidney Lumet movies. Robert Duvall has a very memorable role in this movie as well. And I just think this is going to look great on 4K Blu-ray. I don't know if there was any mention of the studio that's going to be doing it. This does feel like a Kino Lorber release, but you never know. Network is one of those great 1970s films. So maybe the rights of it haven't been leased out. It does feel like the kind of movie that Kino Lover would put out. I hope they're the ones to do it because they've actually put out other Sidney Lumet movies such as Serpico. So we'll have to wait and see. Dog Day Day Afternoon is also another Sidney Lumet movie from the 1970s that has been rumored to be coming to 4K Blu-ray. Not too sure if that's going to be happening this year or in 2025. Recently, I heard it's probably going to be 2025, which is a little bit disappointing. But, you know, that does feel like a summer film. So maybe we'll get it next year in the summer. It's got that heat feel to it. Not the movie heat, just it just feels really hot in New York City. 
And that was basically everything that we got announced this week or got rumored this week. It wasn't really a very busy news week, so we just really got some confirmation on stuff. I'm really excited about Zodiac. But let me know in the comment section, what do you guys feel about the news that was announced this week? Let me know down there. And we're going to get right into the Q&A portion of this week's show right now. I actually got a little bit ahead of myself. There's one more thing that's supposedly coming to 4K Blu-ray. It's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. M. Night Shyamalan has been in the news this week, obviously, because of Trap coming out, which got mixed reviews. You guys saw my review of Trap. I enjoyed the movie. Go see it for Josh Hartnett. But M. Night Shyamalan has directed a ton of movies, and not a lot of them are actually on 4K Blu-ray. His recent stuff is, but we got Unbreakable from the early days, but we still haven't gotten... Two of his three best movies, in my opinion, because the guy came out of the gate three for three. Thankfully, we got Unbreakable on 4K Blu-ray. But somehow, we don't have The Sixth Sense, and we don't have signs on 4K Blu-ray. But we're going to get one that a lot of people probably don't appreciate that much, including myself. And maybe I'll get this 4K Blu-ray to finally check it out again, because I remember the disappointment when I saw this movie back in the day. And that is The Village. I feel like this is when we finally saw the cracks in the M. Night Shyamalan foundation, where I felt like he always had to put a you know, a twist at the end of his movies, and the twist in this movie just, it really wasn't that good at the time, but I should probably check this movie out, because it has a great cast, and it is a very well-made movie, and it is coming to 4K Blu-ray, so The Village, I just hope that Signs and, you know, The Sixth Sense get their love and get their 4K Blu-rays, because those are classics from M. Night Shyamalan, and are two of his three best films, in my opinion, so hopefully we get that. Well, like I was saying, it's time for the Q&A portion of this week's show, and I don't think we got any official confirmation on The Village anyway, so technically at this moment, it's still just a rumor. But this question is from JCTAI100, and he wrote, What holds up some releases versus others? I'm sick of all these garbage movies that are so bad they're good being released in 4k wouldn't it be a great idea to have polls on blu-ray digest or whatever that shows what people want the most i'm sure studios are somewhat interested well it comes down to, it actually comes down to a bunch of factors why certain movies come to 4k blu-ray and why others don't now Vinegar Syndrome is known for releasing some really bad movies on 4K Blu-ray that it makes you question, why does this movie get a 4K Blu-ray release while this other one does it? And a lot of that has to come down to the pricing of the rights to those movies. You know, those junk movies that not a lot of people might like but have a cult following, the Vinegar Syndrome will give the beautiful 4K Blu-ray treatment to, give it some of that really nice packaging. Other boutique labels will do that as well. It's because, you know what? Studios aren't going to lease out the rights to their big movies to these boutique labels. No, they're going to give it a cheap price to this so both of them can turn a profit. Vinegar Syndrome can turn a profit. They're not going to pay Warner Brothers for a Nightmare on Elm Street. It's the same thing with like Criterion or Arrow Video. They're not going to pay for a Nightmare on Elm Street. Warner Brothers is going to put that out themselves. Now, this is where the laziness comes in from the major studios is, you know, we see this all the time with like Fox and Disney, mainly because Disney now owns 20th Century Fox, so they got the rights to such classics as, you know, Fight Club. We talked about David Fincher and his movie's not really coming to 4K Blu-ray. We're going to get 7 in 2025 for sure. That's already been confirmed. But the movie he's probably most known for, and I don't think it's his best movie. I still think that's 7, but I absolutely still love it, is Fight Club. And you know, that movie got eaten up by the monster that is Disney when 20th Century got bought by that. There's a ton of great 20th Century Fox films that have never come to 4K Blu-ray that a lot of us have been asking for. And the reason being is, you know, they're lazy. And Disney, for some reason, will not lease the rights out to these movies to other studios to put out. You know, I really got excited, and a lot of us did earlier this year, when Sony was supposedly going to be releasing all of Disney's catalog movies on 4K Blu-ray. Now, it turns out it was probably just all of these new releases coming, like the first omen but those have only been released on blu-ray so a lot of us got our hopes up and you know maybe things will change in the future and sony will start releasing all these other back catalog films on 4k blu-ray but i have my doubts and it's just these major studios sitting on their movies and not leasing them out and maybe the boutique labels can't actually afford to get the rights to these movies so they can actually release them but unfortunately it's all business stuff it's all rights issues and it really does come down to that in the end and of course it comes down to money and corporate greed which unfortunately does always affect the consumer because that is the big reason why a lot of these boutique labels are forced to release movies that necessarily aren't beloved by the world, but are just loved by, you know, certain groups of people while we get these cult movies. Now, I'm a fan of some movies that are so bad they're good, so I'll always pick those up if I enjoy them, but I do 100% agree with you. There are some classics out there that we haven't gotten on 4K Blu-ray that we absolutely deserve. I'm sure these studios know it. 
But, you know, how high up the ladder does that go? Does it only leave, like, you know, middle management and the higher ups? Like, it's physical media. We don't care. I'm not entirely sure. But we're seeing a lot of studios really dive into physical media lately. 4K Blu-rays have actually taken up a bigger piece of the pie. So people are buying physical media a lot more lately, which I absolutely appreciate and just love to see. But I would love to see some of these all-time classics finally get their due on 4K Blu-ray. You know, of course, we also want it done right. We don't want to see them rush it out or see what's happening, you know, with the Nightmare on Elm Street on 4K Blu-ray, which I'm really excited about. But there's a lot of questionable stuff when it comes to the packaging, and it just feels lazy. And, you know, the boutique labels would definitely do a better job with that sort of thing. And we have to wait years for some of our favorite films to come to 4K Blu-ray. I've been actually very spoiled where most of my favorite films, except for The Terminator, which will be out this year, are coming to 4K Blu-ray and have come to 4K Blu-ray. So I can honestly say I've been pretty lucky, but I still have a very long list of movies that I would love to get on 4K Blu-ray. While there's some pretty crappy movies that have gotten 4K Blu-ray releases, but it all just comes down to the studios and money and how the money is being exchanged. It's the same reason why we have you know certain movies released in the UK like Heather's that will not get a 4K Blu-ray. Supposedly you'll be able to get it pretty soon, but you know it's a still an import that you'll have to do. Well, you know because whoever has the rights in the United States doesn't want to release it. So of course it always comes down to money, corporations, movie studios, you know, and who is going to get their money first. And then of course the people who actually are going to be buying these movies, they're at the bottom of the totem pole, which always hurts. And you know, of course that's just the way things go, unfortunately. So that's the reason for all of that. And that was a great question, buddy. Thank you so much. I appreciate you sending that in. It's definitely a big topic that we need to talk about more here on the channel. And the next one is from Dark Room Reviews. And he wrote, do you have a most anticipated film from theaters you want to see? So my most anticipated movies for the rest of the year are, I'm actually kind of excited for Alien Romulus. You know, obviously this happens every time an Alien movie comes out. I get a little bit excited and then I leave the theater disappointed. But I have hope for this one. Now, I have seen the trailers, unfortunately, despite the fact that I try and avoid the trailers. And, you know, them using physical sets, real sets. It feels like, you know, they're actually trying to make a good Alien movie. Will they stick the, la will they stick the landing? Well, we'll have to wait and see. But then, of course, on September 6th, we're getting Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Again, another movie I'm really worried about. Tim Burton hasn't made a good movie in years. Michael Keaton, though, he really swings and has been hitting the ground rule doubles, home runs, and grand slams for a few years now. Almost about 10 years now where he really got that career resurgence thanks to movies like Birdman, where he should have won Best Actor. Still kills me to see him put that, you know, acceptance speech back in his jacket. He should have won that year. Ugh. That's one that also really bothers me, just because I love Michael Keaton. So I'm a little bit biased, of course. But still, should have won for Birdman. But either way, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I hope they do it right. I'm really excited about bringing everybody back. Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, uh, bringing in Jenna Ortega. I know she's really having her moment right now. And let's just hope that's really good. But the movie I'm still most anticipating for 2024 is definitely Nosferatu from Robert Eggers. Robert Eggers is one of the best directors working today. He's three for three for me. You know, I honestly think that his first two movies, The Witch and The Lighthouse, are still his two best movies. I love them both. The Northman was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. I picked up the 4k blu-ray actually been wanting to review that 4k blu-ray here on the channel maybe we will leading up to nosferatu but you know i still think that movie was incredibly well made with some great performances and robert eggers he just knows how to capture a certain time period and i expect him to be able to do that with nosferatu and you know you hear things people saying including robert eggers that this movie is just going to be downright scary and how movies aren't scary anymore but this one is going to get under your skin and you know what I can't think of a better way to spend Christmas than actually going to the theater and seeing Nosferatu. So I can't wait for it. Willem Dafoe is in this movie. Uh, I think Bill Skarsgård is in this movie as well. So either way or this is going to be... Is it Bill this time? I can't remember which Skarsgård is in it because I know the other Alexander Skarsgård was actually in The Northman. So he did a great job. Got jacked up for that movie. And I just know that this movie is at least going to be beautiful to look at and be very well made. And I just hope, again, that they stick the landing with this one. But I have all the faith in the world in Robert Eggers. You know, there's him, Mike Flanagan, Ari Aster. I think they're right now at the top of the mountain of working horror directors today. And there's plenty of great ones also coming up behind them. We always get spoiled when it comes to horror movies. But, you know, getting these more highbrow ones from, like, Robert Eggers... It's just something I cannot wait for. I know a lot of people are excited for Terrifier 3. I wasn't the biggest fan of the first two Terrifier movies, but still, I'll probably check out Terrifier 3. I still think they should swap those dates and have, you know, Nosferatu come out in October, whereas Terrifier 3 is a Christmas movie, and have that come out in, uh, in December. So that was a great question as well, Dark Room Reviews. Thank you so much, buddy. 
And if you guys didn't know it, Dark Room Reviews also has a YouTube channel. I think he just passed 400 subscribers. So make sure you guys head over to his channel and give him a subscribe. He definitely deserves it. And the next question is from Kevin Kruger. And he asks, for a billion dollars, would you never watch another movie for the rest of your life? No, because I don't know if I get another shot at life. I'm pretty sure I don't. So I am not going to take any amount of money to stop doing the one thing I absolutely love doing in this world, which is watching movies. I love film. It's my favorite thing on this planet. You know, there's plenty of other things that I love, but I have always just loved movies. And you know what? You always find new movies from plenty of different eras and you know you just get that special feeling from watching a movie and when you find one that is really good that hits you emotionally you can't replace that even for any amount of money now if faith is watching this i'm sure she's going to be pissed off that i would say something like that and be like oh you know you like sports and video games too you could just do that or watch tv well it's not the same as movies movies are just that one special thing you know that's why i say we always need new cinephiles to discover what i think is the greatest medium in all of art now there's plenty of great people who love books Books, love TV, love painting, opera, all of that stuff. But I still think the greatest art form that we've ever gotten is film. And you know what? There could be so many different genres. You can have all this highbrow stuff that is really great, all this lowbrow stuff that is really great, just movies that you can just have a good time with. You know, that's the thing about movies. Some people always get on their high horse about certain movies. No, movies are movies, and movie fans are the best, no matter what form they like. You know, if people just like horror movies, that's perfectly fine. If they don't ever watch anything else, just they're, they're supporting cinema and they know what they love and that's just you know for me i love every single genre of film obviously some more than others and you know musicals have never really been my thing but hey i just actually grabbed grease on 4k blu-ray finally i'm kind of in the mood to watch it so you'll get a grease 4k blu-ray review this upcoming week on the let's talk review show i'm excited to talk about that i don't know why i just heard grease lightning the other day on the radio i'm like man you know what it's been a long time let me try that one again i always appreciated that movie but that's another one that i just have never loved mainly just because of my musical taste but still there are some great musicals out there and i can never accept any amount of money to never watch any film again i don't care what it is you know film is the greatest thing to me and i won't take money to never watch it again and the next question actually isn't a question and it's from tony the lone rider smith and he wrote no question just a kudos to you for doing a top 25 favorite movie list which I suck at, and the first list having Poltergeist on it ahead of E.T., no less, LOL. Ah, uh, yeah, that, well, speaking of that, you know, I know a lot of people probably thought, wow, you like Poltergeist more than E.T.? A lot of people also realized that in June of 1982, we didn't just get Poltergeist, we also got E.T., The Thing, Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan, uh, there's one more in there, oh, Blade Runner, all in June of 1982. What a time to be alive, especially if you're a sci-fi horror fan. Toby Hooper technically directed Poltergeist, while Steven Spielberg directed E.T. Now, these movies were being made at the same time, and the rumor goes that Steven Spielberg at least co-directed that movie. I believe he was on set, you know, working with Toby Hooper. Either way, they made a masterpiece in Poltergeist, but it still does feel like a Spielberg movie, and that horror twist on it is why I give it the slight edge over E.T., even though, you know, John Williams did that incredible E.T. score. It's my favorite John Williams score, but Jerry Goldsmith did the score for Poltergeist. I just prefer that horror element more. Poltergeist, again, it's one of those special movies to me. Not that saying that E.T. isn't. I love E.T. Again, it made my top 25 favorite movies of all time list. So, of course, I love it. But why would I give the edge to Poltergeist? Those are the reasons why I just absolutely love, love Poltergeist. And making a top 25 list is really hard. It's always changing. You tell me you're working on your top 25 list. Whenever you finish it, post it definitely in one of the comments of one of the videos. I would love to see what you got. You know, I know it's really hard it really is so difficult to make a list of your favorite movies because you know something's always going to get left off that list and things change you know you find a new movie or you know some movies you know you used to love and i see this all the time in the comments from people and i feel like people feel bad about it because i feel bad about this too you know there was a movie you used to just oh you loved it so much as a kid and now you watch it as an adult and it just doesn't hit the same and you feel like you lost something and i get that but you know you're always changing. You're not the same person you were 10 years ago. You're not going to be the same person in 10 years. So don't feel bad about if your opinion changes on a movie. It happens to all of us. But this is a great question as well. Well, it's not really a question. I really appreciate you sending that in. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. And the next question is from our channel director, Mr. Smelly Potato. It's actually two questions. Anyway, what is something from the 80s you would like to see make a return and if someone told you today you had to take 10 movies off of your shelf and throw them away, 
which ones would they be? Um, from the 80s, I would love the return of video stores. Now, obviously, this wouldn't happen. It's not practical with streaming services, but there was always something special about going to the video store and just walking around and looking at movies. You know, even, you know, you were only going to take one or two out that day. It was still really fun to just walk around, look at the films, talk to maybe some other people who like movies as well. I feel like this is when society just loved movies. Everybody would go to Blockbuster and just look around, pick out a new release. You know, this is when movies were really at the pinnacle of of the world was in the 1980s. Now, I wasn't around in the 1980s, so this, for me, I look at the 1980s through rose-colored goggles. It's a big reason why I just, you know, if you see all the colors here on the channel, I just I was so inspired by the 1980s. It looks like the best time to be alive. Now, of course, me not being there, I just have all these nostalgic feelings for an era that I was never a part of. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. Even if you were, like, kind of born in the mid-1980s, you didn't really get to fully experience 1980s like me in the 1990s. When the 90s ended, I was eight years old, coming on nine, so... Of course, I didn't appreciate the 1990s like I should have, and, you know, I look back at it finally because I was a child in that era. I'm sure so many people struggled through the 1980s, but for me, looking back at the 1980s and the world of film and being able to go to a video store, the world before social media, you know, I think social media really did a a lot of damage on this planet overall and how we're all connected and you know gives everyone the freedom to say what they want i remember a great quote from i think it was christian harloff a fellow new yorker who has a great you know youtube channel as well he's had plenty of great youtube channels been very successful but he said the smartest person has access to the internet and so does the dumbest person and that is a hundred percent true everybody in between that can go on the internet and write whatever the hell they want to write and it just creates so much conflict in this world and you know it just used to be like a lot more people had compassion for each other and you know that's one thing about the 80s I wish would come around the 90s and anything, you know, I appreciate the internet, I love the internet, I love these big TVs, but sometimes I think we went too far with certain things in technology, and as somebody who loves technology, I want to keep the TVs, I want to keep the sound systems, I want to keep the computers, but still... You know, there's certain things I just feel like the world ah, just feels a little bit unhappy. When I look back on the 1980s, it seemed like it was such a happy place. I'm sure it wasn't the happiest place, but it seemed like a happy place. And video stores came out of the 1980s. And man, I wish those would come back. I know they won't make sense in 2024, but I wish they'd come back. And to answer your other question, well, I got 10 Blu-rays and 4K Blu-rays. And I'm not going to go in any particular order, but these would be the ones that I would throw out right now. If I had to, I would, don't want to throw any of these out. And off the top, we got Ouija. Not Ouija Origin of Evil, but the original Ouija movie. And I bought this 4K Blu-ray, I believe, last theater review here on the channel. Didn't really enjoy this movie. It's fine. It definitely isn't the worst movie in the world, like a lot of people said. This 4K Blu-ray is pretty good, but, you know, gotta pick 10 movies. This one I would have no problem throwing around. This is Terminator Genesis. I only bought this to do a review here on the channel and, you know, complete my Terminator collection. You know, I felt guilty about it, but Terminator Genesis to me is the worst Terminator movie. It's got some moments, but this one, oh my god, if you want to see an almost offensive Terminator movie, you know, they have scenes from the original Terminator that don't even have the original score attached to it. You just don't do that. And this one I would throw out because I really want to grab the 4K Blu-ray, and that is Oblivion. This movie is pretty decent. It's not one of my favorite Tom Cruise movies, but it's also not the worst Tom Cruise movie. It's just, you know, one that you watch, you enjoy, then you kind of forget about it. And the next two are Fates Blu-rays, and that's why I would throw them away, because I don't really like both of these movies. Uh, speaking of M. Night Shyamalan, one of his worst movies, The Last Airbender. It's not as bad as everybody says. If you were a fan of the anime that was on Nickelodeon, obviously you probably do not like this movie. And then the next one from Steven Soderbergh. This isn't a bad movie, it's just not one of my favorite Steven Soderbergh movies, and that's Magic Mike. Now, it's decent enough, I understand why my wife Faith likes it, but... You know, I really bought this for her. I'm just not a real big fan of the movie. It's still better than what you would think. And here's one, again, somebody told me, my cousin Matt said how good Cursed was. And I was like, I remember seeing that and not liking it. He's like, oh, give it another shot. And I did. I believe this was actually one of Wes Craven's. Uh, this came out the same year as another movie he did, uh, Red Eye, which is a much, much, much better movie. But Cursed, it's terrible. It looks awful. It's not a good movie. I was so disappointed by it. Just like I was the first time I saw it, but of course, I still ended up re-watching it, and man, I regret buying it, because of course, it's also a Shout Factory release, so it wasn't that cheap, and it's just not a good movie. Speaking of not good movies, and this was given to me, so of course, I took it, but uh, I would throw it out if I had to, and that is Suicide Squad. Now, the the Suicide Squad, the you know, I guess it's a remake or whatever the hell it is, because it came out only a few years after this one, is a much better movie, directed by James Gunn, really helped lead him to the DCEU job that he has over at Warner Brothers. 
But this one, uh, just one long music video and not in a good way. Now, some good came out of this. Some of these characters eventually do carry over into the new Suicide Squad movie, which I really do appreciate. Of course, Margaret Robbie is a standout as Harley Quinn. She is awesome in this movie. Love her in this movie. Love how she portrays Harley Quinn. You know, that's the stuff that does stand out, but the rest of this movie is just hot garbage. I remember the girl at the end, like, moving her hands around the main antagonist. I'm like, what the hell is she doing? It's just a downright stupid movie. Waste of the Joker. Waste of so many things. Um, here's one that a lot of people like, but I never really cared for it. Again, a DVD, uh, Blu-ray that was given to me. Anaconda. I know people like Anaconda. I don't like Anaconda. VFW. Uh, this movie was pretty decent, but again, this is just one where um, I, if I had to pick 10 movies to get rid of, I saw this movie. I probably won't watch this Blu-ray again. I don't mind having it on the shelf just in case because, you know, it was given to me and, you know, maybe in like five or six years, I'll be like, ah, maybe I'll watch VFW again. And then last but not least, and this one kind of hurts, but I bought this double pack because I wanted to watch Once Bitten with Jim Carrey. And then it came with Love at First Bite. And I didn't really think any of these movies, both of these movies were that good. So if I had to pick 10, you know, this one would definitely go. So those are both great questions, Mr. Smelly Potato. Thank you so much, buddy. I really do appreciate it. And I always appreciate your support, you know, being a channel director. We'll have your director's review actually in the ne next upcoming weeks. Also, I, I appreciate your new picture, buddy. Beetlejuice, always love to see that. So thank you, Mr. Smelly Potato. And the next question is from Emmanuel. And Emmanuel asks, my birthday is August 7th. Happy birthday, buddy. I'm actually recording this on August 8th, so your birthday was technically yesterday. So any movies that came out on my birthday, and actually I looked up my birthday, I think I had a question about this like maybe a year or two ago, and I just never had any luck with movies coming out on my birthday. I've had some movies come out around my birthday that are pretty good, but movies like Cop and a Half came out on my birthday, or Walking Tall, not the original one, but the one that stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson, which I did like at the time, but you know, again. But the most famous movie that probably came out on my birthday is Paul Schrader's Cat People, and I really like that movie. I actually have the 4K Blu-ray. It's not my favorite Paul Schrader movie, but it's still a very, very, very well-made Paul Schrader film, and that's definitely the best movie that's come out on my birthday. I just remember as a kid, I always went to the movies on my birthday, but no movies ever really came out on my birthday that were that great. The one that always sticks out in my head, and it's pretty funny, is Fifty First Dates. I just have very fond memories of going to see Fifty First Dates in theaters when I was a kid, and I think it came out like two or three weeks actually before my birthday. I didn't even tell you what my birthday was. It's April 2nd, so it was just one day after April Fool's Day. Thankfully, I wasn't born on April Fool's Day, because that probably would have been a nightmare for my entire life. Nope, I was born on April 2nd, 1992. So you guys can figure out my age from that. But that's a great question, Emmanuel. Thank you so much, buddy. And then the next question is from Carlos Chavez. And he wrote, what are your top five Nicolas Cage movies? Are there any Nick Cage movies you want to jump onto 4K? So we'll go with my top five first because I think a bunch of these movies still need to come to 4K Blu-ray. And the first one on the list at number five is the Michael Bay film, The Rock. This is the movie that made Nicolas Cage an action star. This one doesn't have a 4K Blu-ray release like we were talking about earlier. This is a 20th Century Fox film that was eaten up by Disney. So this one, it's that's why it's taken forever to come to 4K Blu-ray. You know, this is probably one of Michael Bay's best films. It's actually one of my favorite of his films. Him and Sean Connery just have great chemistry. Uh, so many quotable lines in this movie. You know, so many other great supporting actors appear. I think Michael Bean, Tony Todd appear in this movie. Ed Harris has a good role in this movie. It's just a very, very, very well-made movie. And it's definitely one that shows that Michael Bay can do a lot more than just action, even though this is a dumb action movie in a way. I mean, Nicolas Cage plays a scientist in this movie with the most ridiculous name ever. Uh, what was his last name? Goodspeed? Hi, I'm an agent with the... Uh... F FBI. I'm Stanley Goodspeed. But of course you are. At least he got his name right. Either way or awesomeness, Nicolas Cage knew exactly what he was doing in this movie, and I love him for it. And in number four, I have Pig. This is the movie that came out a few years ago, and this is one I will not spoil for anyone or tell anyone anything about. Just see Pig, because I went into this movie expecting one thing, and it turned out to be a completely different movie than I was expecting. Literally, my jaw hit the floor when I finally got to the end of this movie. It's so well made. Another one I would love on 4K Blu-ray. People were raving about it at the time, kind of like how they're raving about Nicolas Cage and Long Legs right now. And I don't know why. People just stop talking about it. Don't stop talking about Pig. At number three, I got The Family Man. This was directed by Brett Ratner, who gave us, like, the Rush Hour series. Uh, one of the X-Men movies. It might have even been The Last Stand. Tower Heist. A bunch of movies. I know a lot of people like Brett Ratner. And for me, this is probably his best movie. It's also a Christmas movie. 
Um, I remember when this movie came out in the year 2000, Don Shields in this movie. It's it's like kind of like a wonderful life in a way, you know, kind of seeing how your life would be if something different had happened. At the beginning of this movie, him and his girlfriend, you know, they're about to go set up a long-distance relationship. He got a great job possibly lined up. He's got to go do this internship. But she tells him, no, if you leave, it's not going to work for us. And, of course, he ends up becoming this really big, successful businessman, working on Christmas and everything. But you know what? He doesn't care. He doesn't have a, a good personal life. You know, he goes woman to woman. But he's not really a bad guy or anything. I feel like this movie makes you think like he's a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. He's just, life is just different. He's kind of, he's slightly selfish, obviously, because he only has to really worry about himself. But he's still, you know, back on what could have been. And this movie shows you, Don Shield plays an angel in this movie, and he shows him what his life would have been like had he stayed with that girl. You know, he would have been a family man. He would have had kids. He would have just been working at the tire shop for his father-in-law. And, you know, it's a different perspective. You know, he likes certain things from his last life, but he's starting to like this life as well. I'm not going to spoil any more than that, but it is a great movie that I highly recommend from Nicolas Cage. And number two and number one are pretty obvious for a lot of people who've been watching this channel and know what kind of movies I like. Number two is Face Off, directed by John Woo. This one stars him and John Travolta. And this is a classic, cheesy 1997 action movie that has a great key and a lower 4K Blu-ray out there. So many quotable lines. I can eat a peach for hours, or I want to take his face off. A ton of overacting in this movie from two of the biggest overactors out there. But it's a fucking blast. And in number one, another movie that's an absolute blast that I have seen people claim, including John Malkovich, is a bad movie. I don't care. Con Air is number one. And I don't even like John Cusack. And you can even argue that Nicolas Cage doesn't give a great performance. His accent is in and out. You didn't see Leaving Las Vegas on this list, which is, again, probably his best performance. Won him an Academy Award. Uh, but you know what? That movie's really hard to rewatch. He deserved his Academy Award for it. Uh, I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed watching the performance performance but it's nowhere near as fun as watching con air con air is just this is another movie that needs to come to 4k blu-ray the only one on this list of my favorite nicholas cage movies that has a 4k blu-ray release is con is actually face off i own all the other ones but none of them have 4k blu-ray releases if i had to guess which one would be coming next I would think it's got to be Con Air at some point. I don't think that was swallowed up by Disney, but I could be wrong. Either way or, that needs a 4K Blu-ray release. But that was a great question as well, Carlos. Thank you so much, buddy. I really do appreciate it. And then we got one more question this week, and it's from Kevin Kruger again. And he asks, what are your top 10 directorial debuts? I made a list for this, and number 10 is one of my favorite movies from last year. And it took a couple years to make this one, but I want to see what A.V. Rockwell does again. And that's a thousand. 2001. If you guys saw my top 10 movies of 2023 list, this is pretty high near the top. I think this is a great movie that got really overlooked. Actually has a, you know, I don't think this is a spoiler, but someone's arguing with me saying that there's kind of a twist in a movie is a spoiler. But this movie has a slight twist at the end of it that kind of changes the perspective of the movie. I think it completely works for the type of film you're watching, and it was kind of staring you in the face the entire time. But either way, or the subject matter of 1001 is something you should absolutely see, because it's something that we don't talk about enough in mainstream films. And this wasn't a mainstream film, but I think it's one you absolutely need to check out. Lady Bird. This one was directed by Greta Gerwig. Greta Gerwig was an actress before this. Her husband is Noah Baumbach, a great writer-director himself. She's also a writer and an actor, like I was saying. But right now, she's made three films, including one of the highest grossing films of last year in Barbie. But before that, she made Lady Bird, and she also made Little Woman, which I really like the 2019 version of Little Woman. is going to be on 4K Blu-ray in the Columbia Classics Volume 5 set. But Lady Bird was a great directorial debut. I can understand why a lot of people might not like this movie. I mean, actually, I don't understand that. It's a great coming-of-age movie you have to see. At number eight, Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead. You know, it's a very low-budget horror film. But it is one of my favorites from the 1980s. Um, you know, this isn't necessarily one of the greatest movies ever made. But for what they did with the money that they had, it's incredible. Uh, Barry Seinfeld, who we were talking about at the beginning of this video, he worked a lot like with the Coen brothers. He worked with Sam Raimi. You know, the Coen brothers, Sam Raimi, they kind of came up in that same exact era of filmmaking. You could actually see some of the techniques that they use in The Evil Dead in Blood Simple, a movie you might see on this list a little bit later. But either way, or what they did with the money that they had, put Bruce Campbell on the map, put Sam Raimi on the map, it kind of gets like a soft reboot with The Evil Dead 2, which I know a lot of people like more than this one, or even Army of Darkness, but still. None of that would have happened without the Evil Dead. 
And at number seven, this is the one that puts Sofia Coppola on the map, The Virgin Suicides. This has a Kino Lorber 4K, not Kino Lorber, this actually has a Criterion 4K Blu-ray release. And I love The Virgin Suicides. So well directed. Uh, Josh Hartnett's back in the fold this week with Trap. He was in this movie as well. Sofia Coppola, maybe not the greatest actor in the world, but she is a phenomenal director. She very rarely misses. I even really enjoyed Priscilla that came out last year. She just got a certain eye, minimal dialogue. She knows what she's doing. And in number six, a guy nobody saw coming as a great director, Get Out, directed by Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele is another director who's three for three for me. Actually, Get Out is not my favorite of his movies. I would actually put it at number three, which is pretty surprising because Get Out is a fantastic movie. You can't even argue how good it's made, the subject matter. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya is great. Lakeith Stanfield has a small role in this movie. Kind of made people notice Lakeith Stanfield, who I think is one of the greatest working actors today. Jordan Peele, people just knew him from Key and Peele. The comedy guy, mad TV guy, well, he directed the shit out of Get Out. Number five, the Coen brothers. Blood Simple. They made a great noir movie right out of the gate. It stars one of their greatest actresses that appears in any of their movies in Francis McDermott. Even marries one of them. She is fantastic in this movie. The other supporting characters do a great job. It's beautifully shot. I can highly recommend that Criterion 4K Blu-ray. At number four, I got John Huston and the Maltese Falcon. One of the greatest noir films of all time, if not the greatest. I know a lot of people will put that at number one. John Huston went on to direct so many other great movies that had inspirations and so many great directors like Steven Spielberg. So, you know, John Huston knew how to direct a movie. He's the father of Angelica Huston. He can even act his ass off if you ever seen Chinatown. He does a great performance that. Mr. Gitz. Uh, and, but you know what? He came out of the gate hard in 1941 with the Maltese Falcon. At number three, and this, uh, you know, this is an example of a director making his best film right out of the gate and that was boys in the hood from 1991 directed by john singleton i don't think john singleton ever came close to boys in the hood because boys in the hood is an absolute stone cold classic i've probably seen boys in the hood over 20 times to this point and it's still a great movie when john singleton passed away i really liked the show snowfall snowfall and he did a great job producing that show but, you know, everyone was talking about Boys in the Hood. It's a modern-day masterpiece. And, you know, the other the two movies above it are also masterpieces, in my opinion. Number two is Citizen Kane, directed by Orson Welles. He directed this movie in his 20s. Never made a movie before this. And, man, he came out of the gate swinging. He stars in it. He ages himself up, ages himself down. You know, some some movie-making techniques that had never been used before, certain dissolves, the passing of time, all that got started right here with Citizen Kane. There's a reason why this is one of the greatest films of all time. And, you know, I understand why a lot of people might not like it, because I, I guess it's an older 1940s black-and-white film. But if you're going to watch a film from the 1940s and, you know, you can't look past the black-and-white, you still have to see Citizen Kane. I promise you, you'll enjoy it. It's paced phenomenally, it looks beautiful, and the story itself is still great to this very day. And then at number one, you guys know my love for Quentin Tarantino, so how can it not be Reservoir Dogs? This movie took Quentin Tarantino forever. This is a guy, you know, this is why Quentin Tarantino is also an inspiration on me. You know, he had to eat shit for a very long time working at the video store till he could finally get the movie he wanted to make get made. You know, it really took Harvey Keitel coming along to get Reservoir Dogs made. And Reservoir Dogs is still one of Tarantino's best movies. I put it probably only at number two, only behind Pulp Fiction. It's still that damn good. You know, not even showing the robbery. All the decisions, the needle drops. You know, it just shows you what, you know, he wears his inspirations on his sleeve. And this movie... For me, it's one of the best movies ever made. Came out in 1992, the year I was born. And man, I love Reservoir Dogs. It is absolutely the best directorial debut. And I don't think Quentin Tarantino has ever missed. The closest he ever came was Death Proof. And even that's kind of like a project he wanted to do with his buddy. And it's still a very watchable movie. So that was a great question, Kevin Kruger, as well. Thank you so much, buddy. And thank you to everybody who asked questions for this week's episode of Let's Talk Physical Media. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's show. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on, share this video if you could. We also have channel memberships, a friends of the channel tier, a producers tier where you'll find John Doe Juggalo and Jason Martin. And we also have a director's tier where you're going to find Frank from Frank's Media and Reviews. And you're also going to find Mr. Smelly Potato. John Doe Juggalo and Frank from Frank's Media and Reviews do have great YouTube channels out as well that I can highly recommend you guys check out. They're also just great guys. But if you got no money to throw our way, don't you worry about it all. All we hope is that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to get out in those streets and tell your friends about us. And then 
We'll be seeing you around.